What's up, Internet World? Matthew here, coming to you from the beautiful North Shore of Long Island yet again. I'm actually standing on the opposite side of Port Jefferson Harbor in a little hamlet called Oldfield. I'm at the foot of the Oldfield Lighthouse. Uh, I got a beautiful sunset behind me that's just about finished. Uh, I wanted to shoot over there on the other side of the building, but unfortunately, as you can tell, the wind's been picking up a lot, so I wasn't able to do that for you. But if you go over to the Instagram, at Monster Health and Fitness, check out some of the video, uh, some of the pictures that I've posted, and leave some comments, let me know what you think. But it's still a beautiful evening to bring you guys a new vlog. I know the last one that I recorded at the other side of the harbor was uh, really heavy. Uh, I, was talk, uh, I had a lot to, to bring out. I hope some of you checked out the links in the description there. Uh, now, I was talking about the monomyth, or the hero's journey, which really is the, is the dissemination of this idea by a man named Joseph Campbell, who found that throughout all of human history, all of existence, in all cultures, and all times, we've basically been telling the same story to ourselves. Uh, we've been expressing the story of the self over and over again in different ways, but the elements and the format has really deviated very little. And there's a point to this story, and I want to talk about that right now. Now, Bill Hicks called Life a Ride, and it's a fitting illustration, but I think a better, more modern analogy would be to call life a massive multiplayer online role-playing game. Except this is one in which you don't get to pick your character class. Now, you may incarnate in this life as an uber-smart wizard type, or a muscle-bound fighter type, or whatever kind of character, but you could still choose how you play the game. Let's say maybe you'll spend your life following all the rules, uh, working a good job, squirreling enough coin away so that your offspring can have a decent future. Uh, some, or maybe you choose not to have kids whatsoever, and instead you want to explore the entire map, travel the world, have experiences, meet people, positively touch lives. Or maybe you just blame the world for what you don't have. Become a bitter, cynical old grouch in your 20s, refuse to grow up, and curse the world for robbing you when it was really you who robbed yourself. We're all born with abilities and shortcomings, but how you play the game and what you do with what you're given is entirely up to you. I'm forced to think of Dr. Sean Stevenson. He's a psychologist and a thought leader par excellence. He's easily one of the most powerful human beings on the planet. His TEDx talk, which he gave at Ironwood State Prison more than three years ago, has been viewed more than three million times. I probably can take credit for at least 30 of those views. Uh, he's published two best-selling books, he's sold out workshops and seminars around the world, he's touched so many lives, and yet he's about three feet tall. He has a deformity called osteogenesis imperfecta, and the doctors told his parents that he would not live past the first day of his life. Well, more than 30 years later, all those doctors are dead, and he's the only one left standing. He's not one to let authority tell him what to do. He believes thoroughly, and he's passed this lesson on to anyone that listens to him, that you should never believe a prediction which doesn't empower you. I'm also forced to think about a man named Les Brown. He's one half of a discarded set of twins, born on the linoleum floor of an abandoned building, and adopted and raised by a loving single woman who cleaned houses for rich people, and yet raised him his twin brother, and two other young boys. To say he grew up poor is an understatement, and yet with no formal training whatsoever, he became a successful radio DJ, he became a successful entrepreneur, he has sold out seminars across the country, he's had multiple TV specials, he even served a term in the Ohio State Legislature. Oh, and uh, because he wouldn't compromise his values to soulless corporatcrats, he also had the highest rated yet shortest lived talk show in the history of television. He was labeled as a child, educable, mentally retarded. But <clears throat> a lesson taught to him changed all of that. And he shares that lesson with everyone today that someone else's opinion of you does not have to dictate your reality. Now, these guys started life at a massive deficit. 
but they've inspired millions to change their own lives by making a small adjustment in their thinking. They're called thought leaders, not thought bosses. They lead from the front. They lead by example. They say, hey, life is not going to be fair to you. I know because life hasn't been fair to me. But look at what I've accomplished. Look at where I am and understand that you can do that too. Now, allow me to put a finer point on it. The number of breaths you take is finite, but the effect that you can have after you stop breathing is limitless. While it's true that no ideology is perfect for everyone, it could be said that the hero's journey is a paradigm in which we can all find ourselves. If you want to improve your life or change the world or just lose weight, do anything meaningful with your allotment of minutes. You have to understand that you will not only have to change, you will have to grow. It's as Pastor John C. Maxwell said, change is inevitable, but growth is optional. By understanding that you can be the hero of your own story, you begin to grasp the importance of the task that lies before you and why you need to force yourself to get uncomfortable and embrace the suck. Now, of course, no one's making you do anything. And I don't want to browbeat you into doing anything either. You can, of course, choose to become a non-playable character in your own life. You can keep your head down, do what is expected of you by your family and friends, pay your burgeoning bills with little ruckus, sit around and wait for death, only to act surprised when it finally does come for you. Now, you could go ahead, yell at me in the comments, tell me that I don't understand your life or that I haven't had it as hard as you or that I privileged but you can't say that to Sean Stevenson can't say that to Les Brown or Lisa Nichols or Eric Thomas or Ty Lopez or Gary Vaynerchuk or the literal scores of intensely successful people who definitely have had it way worse than I did that you yourself might have actually had do me a favor. Don't make excuses. You know what? Do yourself a favor. Don't make excuses like they matter. Just make a choice because that's all that matters. Grow or don't. But death is still coming. I want to thank you for listening to my words in whatever format you found them. I hope the raw truth and vulnerability of my experience has been able to help you along in your journey, that you could be honest enough with yourself to progress forward. From beautiful Long Island, I want to wish you all peace, love, and protein pancakes. I'll be talking to you next week. Take care.